criteria estimates. How do we do them? What do we look for? And sometimes additional charges or additional work orders, AWOs, that we can actually pass on to the customer. I'm Ron Ransom, I'm a DYB coach, also painting contractor. Here on a job site, we're actually at the small ranch in Massachusetts. Uh, we're not touching the siding, but we are doing the trim and doing a lot of wood repairs. So uh, you got as I walk through this, I'm gonna point out a few things, a few additional work orders that were added to the job and uh, how we bid this. So we can actually take a look. I'm gonna bring this up, then I'm gonna spin it around so you can see uh, I can stay in the picture on most of it. Uh, behind me, you'll see there's a ranch. There it is, there it is. It's a small ranch. We're only, like I said, we're only doing all the trim. Uh, how do we price this? Pricing this by uh, linear foot would be really, really tough only because of the wood repair and the amount of uh, rot that we found. Uh, one of the options is time and material. I know that is a tough sell to a lot of customers. Pricing out at $45, $50, $60, $65, $70 dollars an hour, the homeowner is going to quickly add that up and say, oh no, I can't afford it. So what we do is we actually take a walk around and we're just going to do the front here as we're going to come over here. Let me show you the front of the house. I just see behind me so I can point. You're going to see over to here. So we have all this soffit to do and we have the woodwork around the window. We're not doing any of the um, basement walls, uh, but they do need work. So what I did is I gave that a line item price. Uh, I measured out the square footage of the foundation, figured out how many hours it was going to take us for, to scrape it, masonry primer, and then a coat of white paint. Uh, that turned into about seven hours worth of work figured out with a gallon of paint, um, a quarter primer, and I gave a line item price for that. They weren't asking for that, but I was on the job site when I did my initial walkthrough for the um, estimate, so I did that a line item. Uh, they decided not to do that, which is perfectly fine, but that price is always uh, good, for, good for six months or however you keep your pricing good for. Uh, also, these stairs, you're going to see these stairs. These stairs were rotted. Well, they weren't really rotted. They were in really, really bad shape, rusty nails. Uh, kickboards were uh, pretty beat from shoveling up here in New England and just the you'll see is uh, you'll have it there's a ceiling over the uh, small porch and there's nothing on the stairs so the stairs really took a beating so what we do is we actually gave them two options I gave them a price of scraping it down priming it and painting it only because we are painting this is because it's been painted before or we gave them another price of just replacing the, the uh, rises as well as the pressure treated and the pricing was actually not that different for the for the new uh, Actually, one of the added additional costs was was the uh, transfer station fee to get rid of all the extra wood But we because we had extra wood every, everywhere else. We only have one dump fee So that was a that was a given so right now scraped all this uh, we put three hours into scraping and sanding the railings uh, And you know it is a little bit of a guess because you don't know what you're running into uh, but I figured three hours with the experience of the crew, the guys who'd be doing it, that would be something. And this is something an apprentice will be on. Uh, apprentice being a, uh, a new painter. Uh, new painters uh, come from the in, non the industry who want to change. Uh, we tend to pay much better than food service workers, uh, retail, things like that. So they jump on things like this. Uh, we help them out. We show them what to do. We'll, uh, every now and then we'll walk by, uh, make sure they're not on the phone and things like that. So three hours. Uh, we are going to stain these stair treads instead of painting them, uh, this, uh, and the rises will get will get primed and painted. So right here we have a, you know you have about a half hour over here. You start adding it up that way. This is going to take two hours, three hours, and in, in the in the more. So let's uh, walk over here. Excuse me as I walk through this. So as we walk here, you're going to see right behind me that was a discovery. Uh, there was a gutter right there, and all behind the gutter was rotted. So we had to replace the the wood on that side. Um, price of wood is the price of wood. Uh, an hour for that to be fixed. It, we could not send a carpenter over here for one hour. Uh, so we tend to break everything up in half days uh, because of the setup and cleanup. Uh, carpenters do get paid much more than a painter, uh, or at least or at least the crew leaders they get paid about the same. But the charge for the homeowner is uh, much more expensive than a regular painter be on the job site. So right here, you know, you could probably wrap this whole front painting prep and priming for about eight hours worth of work plus a, a few hours for the porch. So things to think about though, you know, do they have screens in the windows? If they have screens in the windows, they should either come off or you're going to have to drape them with plastic. Last thing you want is if some white trim paint to be dripped down onto the, onto the siding. 
What do we use? We use our four inch rollers. Some of us call them sausage rollers. Some of us call them whizzies. And that's how the under, underside of the soffit will be painted. Uh, cut in with a brush. Uh, and fast, fast, fast. So if we get a day of prep out here, and then we have the similar to the back of the house, the side of the house here, we'll walk around this side. And you gotta see this side of the house also. This side of the house. Uh, the soffit has been completely replaced. This was found as we were scraping it. We stopped the scraping. They actually saved a little bit of prep. Uh, we brought the carpenter over here and replaced that entire soffit. We cut the um, soffit at the uh, Home Depot where we picked up the half inch ply. Uh, we also primed it on saw husses outside. So before we put it up, all we had to do was hit it with a caulking and some finished coat of paint. So those are the things we do. Those are additional work orders. Some of the other additional work orders, like I said, is this, this foundation. And you're going to see this foundation has a history of, of it looks like homeowners painting. You're going to see here we have a couple different colors. Uh, someone rolled out this before. We note this on the, uh, although we're not painting any of the gray, we do note that. And uh, we're painting the foundation. That would have all went away. This side of the foundation wasn't getting painted, just the addition and all underneath the decking out back. Like I said, they decided not to do that at this time because of the additional rot we found. Uh, the additional work order on this house was about $1,700. The original uh, bid for the trim was about $1,700. So you'll see it really added up quick. So what we want to do is anytime we're walking around the house, we're not only giving them a price on painting the house, uh, painting the trim, we're also giving them other things. Maybe they haven't asked, but maybe it was a discussion. Front door garage door walls that the masonry walls around the house there's a big deck out back that's been uh, was actually a composite decking from way back when that's all discolored has mold on it we did give her a price uh, but we also stipulated that the color will probably not come back uh, she decided not to do it this year and uh, also want to make sure that we keep our signs out here when we're working also uh, great way to drive by and and catch all this so here it is we have uh, this is the house. A couple little tips, the add-ons. I hope that helped a little bit. If you have any questions, you can find me at D, uh, Ron at DYB Coach. Uh, also, find me on Facebook. I love to chat with other painters out there. We can we can either chat on uh, Messenger or you can send me a cell phone, uh, and I can trade your mind. And we're more than happy to uh, answer some of your questions. So you have to know a couple of the tips before I leave. You have to know your hourly rate. If you don't know what your hourly rate is, how are you going to bid successfully? You have to make a profit. You know, we don't want to these, uh, we call them guesstimates. You just don't want to throw a guesstimate out there. Yeah, I think it's going to take me about a day. You should at least know how much yourself, if you're a one-man painter, a one-man with a crew, or maybe a, a three-person crew out there, you have to know your production. If you know a guy could paint that soffit in two hours, great. It's two hours. It's not, ah, yeah, that, that, that might be about two hours. You've got to lose your shirt. Believe me, I've been there. You do not want to lose your shirt on these jobs. So look at the house. You've had some experience in the past. I would rather have you add hours to this than to try to win it by the low price. Low price painting loses. So get what you're worth. Your quality paint. Buy quality paint, give them a quality paint job. They will tell your friends and it'll go on and on and on. Uh, referrals are our mainstay here uh, for Ramsden Painting. Uh, so anyways, if I can answer any questions, find me at Ron at DYB Coach. Love to talk to you. Uh, and anyways, happy painting out there and bid successfully. Have a good one. Bye.